Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to another 7 star character review. Today we're going to be taking a look at Nia. So, as you're probably aware, her kit got completely changed. Uh, pretty much every ability has been completely overhauled, and she's basically a completely different character now. But is she better? Uh, the short answer is not really. She's still uh, a pretty bad character. In my tier list, I put her in the silver tier, and honestly, she's definitely at the lower end of that tier. Even at 7 stars with maxed abilities, she isn't going to do too much. Like, her basic ability right here will deal 95% damage, and she doesn't have a very high base damage to start, but I'll talk about that in just a second. And then she'll have a 75% chance to grant crit chance up one to a random hero and then she can gain stealth if that was a critical hit that's fine i mean it's an ability it isn't going to change the course of the battle i mean this is a 75 percent chance to grant crit chance up right and crit chance up is just going to increase the chance that they'll critically hit still not guaranteed and then you have to hope that this will go to an attacker where it can actually be useful so it's really not going to be uh, effective. And then her other abilities are interesting as well. She can reduce the cooldown of stat-based buff durations on enemies and stat-based debuff durations on allies. So basically what that means is any, any status effects that are like uh, attack up or speed up or speed down, basically anything that's like plus 30% or something like that, of a stat so uh, like disarmed stun those won't count prepared those are not going to be reduced or cleansed including taunt and stealth so very rarely is that going to be useful like with her aoe that can reduce the durations of the buffs on the enemies for the stat based buffs it doesn't even do a lot of damage just like 1.1k on a critical hit uh, let me pull up her stats real quickly there we go. So she's only got 10,000 max health at 7 stars and 1.9k attack. And her abilities, the actual damage multipliers on these aren't that high. Her basic, 95%, and her AoE is only 60%. So she's not going to do a lot of damage. Her basic might do 1.5k, 1.6k on a critical hit. But when you're facing full 7 star teams, 1.5 thousand isn't going to do anything and in almost every situation you're going to want to replace her with someone else and also this ability right here her first special will also heal the target ally or the target hero for 30 percent of their max health that's fine it's a small heal this ability is a three turn cooldown uh whereas like cook bart will heal for 55 percent uh, on a two turn cooldown so if you really need another healer use cook bart instead of her and honestly cook bart would probably do more damage anyway now with all of that said she does have a lot of potential to become better in the future first of all like with these two abilities here you can see that there is some synergy with crit chance up too uh, like she'll reduce the cooldowns more or whatever which again isn't going to be super helpful, but she will get a little bit of a boost if she has that crit chance up too, which she can gain from Master Wu, who's going to be entering the game here soon. So she's going to have more synergies there. And then the really interesting thing is with her passive ability, uh, where she has some synergy with Jay, who is an unreleased character. Uh, we don't know anything about him. He's not even in uh, the game, so we can't look at him yet. Uh, whereas we can look at Wu's abilities. We don't know anything about Jay except that he's probably going to be a brick pace event, so similar to Yeti, uh, and pr that'll probably take place after Master Wu. Uh, but basically, whenever he takes damage, Nia will have a 65% chance to heal him immediately for 15% of her max health, uh, which is about a 1.5k heal, which is decent. Uh, I mean, it's every time he takes damage, a 65% chance. It kind of reminds me of Burnabus and Magisto, the way that Burnabus can counterattack and then uh, heal up thanks to Magisto's passive. Uh, and sometimes uh, he'll end up healing for more than he was damaged. So if Jay turns out to be a tank, this might be pretty effective because she could heal him up whenever he's getting damaged. And if he was any other kind of unit, it would just help keep him alive for longer as well 
And the other thing is Jay could have some kind of synergy with her in his kit. I mean, potentially there could be some sort of interaction that's similar to Basil and Willa where like, uh, if Nia is an active hero, Jay will revive himself whenever he's defeated or something like that. Uh, then that could be really, really, really crucial to have these two characters on the same team, and they could actually be really effective together, even though Nia by herself isn't great. Uh, also, the other thing is with Kai's passive, he will counterattack, uh, or he'll have a chance to counterattack whenever Nia takes damage, and as you know, Kai does a lot of damage on his basic, especially if he had uh, stealth. And then also, we know that we're getting some Ninjago sets here soon. They're going to be opening a whole new neighborhood for Ninjago sets. My guess is we'll probably end up getting at least three to start. One of them will probably be Lloyd's Dragon, since, that, uh, since his dragon was used in the promotional images for LEGO Legacy. I assume that that is one that they have planned. And then my guess is probably also the Destiny's Bounty and maybe Garmadon's castle for him, uh, but if they do add a Ninjago set, of course it's going to have synergies with the Ninjago units, and will probably make her uh, at least a little bit better, uh, and one of the abilities for the Ninjago set could be something along the lines of, like, uh, if you have five Ninjago units on your team, Master Wu will gain X stat increase, or something like that, or maybe uh, the Ninjago team will gain plus 10% attack per Ninjago ally, or something along those lines where it will be important to have a full team of five, and so she might be useful for that. Uh, but with that said, we are going to have six Ninjago units after Jay is released. Uh, we're going to have Lloyd, Zane, Kai, Nia, Jay, and Wu. So I think Nia will probably be the one left out unless she has some good synergy with Jay. Uh, the other thing is she's not really used for many events. There isn't a Ninjago event, uh, at least not yet. There might be in the future, uh, but again, we are going to have six units, and she'll probably be the weakest of the six, so she probably won't be the one that you're going to farm, unless, of course, she has that synergy with Jay, or that event could specifically require her, like maybe one of the battles... Uh, you would need like Jay and Nia, and that would be the team that you do that little battle with, and then for the next one, just any five or something along those lines where you, she's actually required. So it might be worth it to farm her just for a potential event like that. Uh, but other than that, there's not very many reasons that you should be farming this character. I farmed her because I was hoping her rework would be a little bit better, uh, but now I do have all my Ninjago characters at seven stars, so I'll be able to do testing once Wu and Jay come to the game. We can actually figure out if Nia will have some viability. Maybe she will find a place in the team. All right, well, that's going to do it for my relatively quick review on my seven-star Nia. Next will be Kai and then probably Lloyd soon after, although I might wait till Wu is out to do the one on my seven-star Lloyd. And then uh, I also have Bart and Scarlet and Jester that I could do 7-star reviews on as well. So expect to see those before too long. And I'm also working on a guide for 6.6, 6.8, and 6.h.4. So that should be uh, a pretty helpful video as a lot of players are starting to hit those battles. Uh, but that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching.